Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners and in this video we'll look at how to use CSS Position Relative. For this example I've set up a simple layout with three dark blue squares positioned on top of a grey background. By default, when no position property has been specified, elements are given an implied position of static. This means that they are positioned according to the normal document flow. Their position on the page is based on where they sit in the HTML. In this example, our squares are in their original HTML source order of square 1, 2 and then 3. And each square is given its own space on the page. When an element is given a position of relative, its position in the normal document flow is not affected and the space that was originally created for it remains in place. Effectively, position relative makes the rest of the document behave as if the relatively positioned element still exists in its original position based on the HTML source order. Let's have a look at a practical example. We'll target our middle square by first targeting its class of square and then using the nth of type pseudo selector with a value of 2 to select the second item of its type or the second item with a class of square. We'll give this second square a position value of relative and then take a look at what's going on in the browser. As you can see, nothing has changed. Square number two remains exactly where it was before we applied the positioning rule, as do squares one and three. So what does this mean for us? When used entirely on its own, position relative won't change the placement of an element. To do this, we need to use it in combination with at least one other property, a top, bottom, left or right positioning value. When combined with top, bottom, left or right values, relative positioning allows us to place an element anywhere we like on the page without affecting any of the other elements that exist around it. To see this in action, let's give square number two a top value of 50 pixels. If we have a look at this in the browser, we'll see that our second square has now moved down away from the top by 50 pixels. The clue to how relative positioning works is in its name. Our element will change its position relative to its original position on the page. In this example, our element has moved 20 pixels down relative to its original top position. Notice how the other elements on the page have not been affected by this adjustment. Squares 1 and 3 remain exactly where they were to begin with, as does the grey container div. Also note that the space inside the grey container hasn't changed. The padding on the top and bottom remains as it was originally and doesn't increase as square 2 moves down. This is because the rest of the document behaves as if square 2 was still in its original position, here in the middle, so the space it originally occupied affects the other elements around it, not its new relative position. Let's take things a step further now and see what happens when we add in another position value to our middle square. This time we'll add in left 50 pixels. So we now have top 50 and left 50 pixels. If we look in the browser now, we'll see that our second square has moved 50 pixels down relative to its original top position and also 50 pixels to the right relative to its original left position. Combining relative positioning values in this way allows you to fine tune the placement of elements on the page without affecting the rest of your layout. There's one more important thing to discuss which is illustrated by this latest example. Notice how square 2 is now overlapping square 3 and is stacked on top of it. Ordinarily, elements will be stacked according to their source order in the HTML. 
This is what's known as the stacking context. Elements that come later in the HTML will stack on top of elements that come before them. So with our three squares here, square one would be laid out first, with square two stacked on top of it, and square three stacked on top of both square two and square one, and so on. However, when giving an element a position of relative, a new stacking context is created. Any element with a position of relative will be stacked on top of other elements, regardless of their original order in the HTML. In this case, square two has a position of relative and is now stacked on top of square three, which breaks the normal stacking context. If this is not what you want to happen, there's two easy ways to fix it. The first is by using the z-index or z-index property. Square 3 should be stacked on top of square 2. So if we target square 3, again using its class of square, followed by the nth of type pseudo selector with a value of 3 to target square 3, and give it a high z-index value of 999, for example, we'll see that it now resumes its original position in the stacking context and is layered on top of square 2. If we remove this z-index value, the second approach is to also give square 3 a position of relative without using any top, bottom, left or right values. So we'll give this position relative. Doing this will bring square 3 into the new stacking context along with square 2 where their HTML order once again affects how they are stacked on top of one another. As we saw at the beginning of the video, using position relative without placing the element with a top, bottom, left or right value won't affect its position on the page. Square 3 remains in place but is now stacked correctly on top of square 2. If you had multiple elements whose stacking context had been affected, you'd need to give each affected element a z-index value or a position relative property to have everything return to normal. So far, we've only moved one square by a very small amount. You could, of course, move multiple elements in different directions and by different amounts. To demonstrate this, let's target square one and move it way over to the left and down towards the bottom of the page. So we'll target class of square and use nth of type 1 this time. First, we'll set its position to relative and then we'll give it a top value of 500 pixels and a right value of 500 pixels. Looking in the browser, squares 2 and 3 remain where they were after the previous adjustments and square 1 is now 500 pixels away from its original top and right edges, so it's way down in the bottom left of the window. Before wrapping things up, let's take a quick look at scroll behavior with relative positioning. As we scroll down in the browser, our elements remain where they are. They are effectively attached to the document and scroll up and out of view with the rest of the elements on the page. The alternative to this would be position fixed, where the elements will be fixed in their position even when scrolling and are not affected by the default scroll behavior. Position fixed is a topic for another video, so please take a look at that if you want to learn more. To recap, when an element is given a position of relative, it remains in the normal document flow and the space that was originally provided for it does not change. Effectively, the rest of the document behaves as if our relatively positioned element is still exactly where it was in the beginning. We're able to place a relatively positioned element anywhere on the page using top, bottom, left or right properties. The element will be positioned relative to its original position on the page. For example, a top value of 50 pixels will move the element 50 pixels away relative to its original top position. Position relative affects the normal stacking context. 
If you want elements to be stacked according to their order in the HTML, you'll need to apply either a z-index value or position relative property to the affected elements. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.